Hello and welcome to my brief video on your guide to digital marketing budgets, where we're going to discuss digital marketing budgets in general terms, in more specific terms, where most small businesses and businesses that are new to digital marketing can often end up getting stuck in some cases for years, and basically how to get unstuck as it relates to digital marketing. So for anyone who is not familiar with me, my name is David Summerfleck. I have about 25 years experience working in digital marketing as a web developer, project manager, copywriter, and in different capacities for multiple agencies across North America. So it's very common to see these types of questions asked by business owners hundreds of times every day whether you look at forums such as Quora, Reddit, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, these are all very, very common questions. How much is a website? How much is SEO? How much is content marketing? Why, why is my website not generating any leads? Why is no one calling my business? Now, the most common questions about digital marketing budgets usually stem from a lack of information about what digital marketing really is and how it actually works. And that's why these questions are so common. These questions usually come from the viewpoint, whether it's intentional or unintentional, and usually it's unintentional. It's the viewpoint that aspects or parts of digital marketing are actually items that can be bought and sold as if you were ordering items on Amazon to be shipped to you, or that they are single one and done items. So that's where very innocent questions such as how much is SEO, how much is e-commerce, how much is a website, how much is this, how much is that. That's where these questions come from. It's the perception that these are separate items that are being bought. Now, the truth is that digital marketing is a process that uses many interconnected elements to reach your desired customers, elements that help you reach more customers and increase profits while expanding into new markets. Now, those elements have to be used in the right way in the right order, and then coordinated, and then run through the actual company website in order to work as they were originally intended. If these elements are not used in the correct order, or in the right way, or not even used correctly, then it falls apart. So digital marketing is a process. It's a service that takes time. And when we look at SEO and e-commerce and content marketing, these are all elements of digital marketing that have to go through the company website. So let's break down digital marketing. When it comes to investing in order to achieve business goals through digital marketing, it's important to first know what digital marketing is. Digital marketing is the process of promoting and advertising a business through the use of online marketing, online marketing processes and digital tools. Now, some of these processes include search engine optimization or SEO for short. That's how you outrank competitors in online search, such as Google. Another process is search engine marketing where you market through in two search engines. There's e-commerce, where you process payments or have shopping availability through your company website. There's email marketing, and there's automation. There's user interaction and user experience. There is responsive design, which is how your website looks and works on modern mobile phones. There's content marketing, there's content repurposing, how you take the content you've created it and repackage and reuse it. For example, I have a blog post about digital marketing budgets. I have a podcast 
episode about that topic. I have a video about that topic. So these are all different ways of taking similar content and repackaging it for different consumer tastes and aptitudes. There's social media marketing, which is how you distribute and promote content through social media channels, such as LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. There's customer relationship management and many more. So digital marketing encompasses all of these facets. It's all of these parts of an ongoing service. Some of the digital tools we might use could be video to advertise our services on YouTube is one example. Other examples could be working with a particular vendor to automate email responses in order to save time and more effectively bill customers. We could also use other digital marketing tools to compare your email newsletter open rates, website views, and subsequent activity. We could use it to track purchases or bill payments and analyze why some purchases don't take place, which is called cart abandonment, to rent out facilities, to schedule consultations or services, and allow for secure video conferencing. It's important to realize that the tools are there to solve business problems and that by themselves, without proper pre-planning or direction, tools ultimately serve no purpose. Since there are so many processes that go into using digital marketing in an effective manner, it's easy to see how digital marketing could be used in an inefficient way. Steps can be used out of sequence. Tools can be used without proper focus. Some steps can be not used at all, such as delivering a website to a client that doesn't work on smartphones or doesn't use e-commerce or doesn't have the correct SEO to help them rank in search engine results. It's for that reason that many business owners can become stuck at a place where they're not seeing the results that they had hoped for. So let's take a look at what many business owners experience in our next slide. Now this is what I call the typical digital marketing customer journey and where it often gets lost. So we have Mr. or Mrs. Business Owner. Mr. or Miss Business Owner, Client A or Client B. So they start out being a business owner. Is the business owner ready to invest in order to increase revenue in a long-term, regularly recurring basis? Now, most business owners who are new or not established or inexperienced will say, no, I don't have any money or I do have money, but it's very limited, or I want to try to do everything myself. So they may try different DIY methods. They may send out RFPs or requests for proposals. They're, they may work with cheap freelancers or basically try to get the best results they can for the cheapest possible prices or just not engage digital marketing at all. Now, in most of these instances, growth is going to be very slow or just not even applicable. If the business owner says, yes, I'm ready to invest $3,000, if it means making $30,000 six months or even a year from now, that's a sound investment for me. If the business owner sees the logic in that, then they will value achieving specific goals and we'll proceed to the next step in my process here in this infographic, which will be defining specific objectives, areas of development, finalizing budgets, and defining success metrics, or what we call key performance indicators or KPIs. Then they go on to develop what their specific SEO should be, what their branding should be based on their identity and market, who their ideal consumer or customer is, and they refine a marketing plan that includes digital marketing. 
Then they go about deploying digital marketing, different assets such as the website, the content, the branding, the PPC, and so on. And then they schedule for checking those KPIs that we just mentioned. And they're well on their way to growing a sustainable business and increasing profits. That's the journey that we take if the business owner says yes. If the business owner says no, then they try do-it-yourself methods, RFPs. What can I get done for this set price that I cannot or will not go beyond? And that's where they're basically confining growth based on price or unknown variables or undefined parameters. So in talking to hundreds of clients, hundreds of business owners over the course of many, many years, I began to see similarities between what I heard and saw from unsuccessful business owners and successful business owners to research conducted by Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Now, Dr. Ross, Dr. Kubler-Ross identified five stages of grief that people go through. Now, the, in her research, these were the five stages that people experienced when grieving the loss of a loved one. Now, of course, the failure of a business is not commensurate to the loss of a loved one. But the stages that I found most businesses going through were nonetheless identical. Now, the parts of these steps were different to a degree. But the steps were the same. Successful businesses made it through to the fifth and final step. They went to that final step and continued beyond it. The businesses that continued to struggle for years and years, and in most cases, until they finally disappeared, they got stuck within these first four steps. So the first step is that of denial, where everything is great. I can do everything myself. I can do everything that's needed. I really don't need any feedback from other people. I know what to do. I'm going to go get my free DIY template, or I'm going to work with this uh, neighborhood hobbyist or someone I found for super cheap online. So for the cost of a nice meal out, I can go get a website, quote unquote, not in embracing the concept that this is an ongoing process. The next step that most struggling business owners go through and went through was anger. They were frustrated with a lack of progress. They blamed external factors. It was the neighborhood hobbyist who didn't know what he or she was doing. It was this plugin that didn't work as I thought it should. It was this cheap template I bought or some other factor. They would resent change or input to the contrary. They were not receptive. The third stage or level was they were unwilling to make changes. I would tell them what needed to be done. They didn't want to do it. They were, in some cases, very resentful or angry. Many figured, well, what's the point? I remember one gentleman even saying to me at a networking event, nobody seems to know anything about this digital marketing. It just seems like it works for some people and not for others. Nobody seems to really know. And I said, sir, that's not the case at all. It's what you're reading and the fact that you're a business owner and you haven't studied SEO and e-commerce and, and, and setting metrics and programming for, for decades. So you don't have the time to, to study this. You have a business to run. You're looking at it from the perspective of the business owner and expecting to know everything overnight. It doesn't work that way. It takes years to learn and master and then be able to implement. So 
he was at that stage of depression. What's the point? Unwilling to engage. Everything needs to be free or super cheap, or I should be able to do it myself. And this again is the bargaining point. Solutions need to be free or cheap. Everything should be super cheap or free. Solutions need to be immediate. I've dug myself into this deep hole. Now I need to get out right away. I'm not seeing the success that I wanted to within, you know, uh, two weeks or, or two months. They question industry norms without even necessarily being informed of what industry norms are and why they're established at that level. And then finally, there is the last level or phase of acceptance where they're finally ready to find solutions, are willing to make long-term plans, and are open to budgeting for growth. She identified these five stages of grief that people go through. And these stages are usually the same for business owners trying to use digital marketing efficiently. If you can make it through to that final stage, you're more likely to use digital marketing in a way that can really accelerate growth into new markets. Once we move beyond the first four stages holding us back, we can move on to accept the situation as it truly is and determine if we're ready to commit to growing a business. As the previous infographic displayed, the way to get unstuck from this inability to fully utilize digital marketing and work at a more productive and profitable level is to move beyond the phase where they may be lingering uncertainty or there may be lingering uncertainty about digital marketing where the business owner is still stuck negotiating price versus value, do it yourself versus professional help, or trying to do everything themselves, even if they aren't already digital marketing experts. This leads to most small business owners getting stuck using free do-it-yourself templates and then either not gaining the online exposure they need or not being seen in online search at all. Free ends up costing them in lost profits, years of slow or no growth, and even more frustration. So let's examine the lure of something for nothing and why it doesn't help businesses grow. Now, in my opinion, based on 20 to 25 years experience working for marketing agencies and working for business owners across the U.S. From opticians to salon owners to restaurant owners to clinics and every other type of business you can think of, I can tell you that in, the, in all of those years, I never once saw a legitimate profit-driven business actually bring in more customers through a free do-it-yourself template website. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm saying in my experience, I never saw it one time. If we were to place an ad in a local newspaper or a local radio station or TV station, there would be a price range for placing ad in newspapers on radio or in television starting at several thousand dollars. In no instance, in newspaper, radio, or TV, would any sales represent representative guarantee results. And the minute you stop paying for those monthly ads, any phone calls that you may get stop coming in immediately. For a fraction of those costs, digital marketing historically delivers more returns on investment and it can also continue indefinitely once a project is launched. A free do-it-yourself template very seldom, if ever, will help you outrank competitors in Google search results. Now, why is that? Again, typically the reason for this is that Unless you're already a developer and an expert in SEO and content marketing, you won't know what your SEO should be, how to program it properly. In many cases, the template you're using 
may or may not be able to actually receive that SEO. It may not even be programmed in such a way that you can even enter it in. In many cases, free do-it-yourself templates do not allow you to increase visibility in social media or local directories. They may be very limited. Technically, they may not work on modern phones. They may not uh, adjust to different screen resolutions. In many cases, they do not increase perception of professionalism. In many cases, they do not allow you to take payments online 24 hours a day. And then look, if you have a business, you need money. Why would you not accept payments through your company website? Why would you not permit people to purchase your coffee or place orders for your restaurant or book appointments at your salon? Why wouldn't you want that? So you're leaving money on the table if you have a cheap website or a free do-it-yourself or template that doesn't permit you to do that. In many cases, free do-it-yourself or templates don't have access or permit access to experienced professional help when needed, or that help could be cost prohibitive, such that over a prolonged period of time, the costs involved could actually end up being much more than you would ever pay if you worked with a single experienced professional from the beginning. Why free do-it-yourself or template sites don't result in growth? What are some other reasons? They can also, in many cases, be deleted at any time with or without notice. They could, and most do, have a lack of engaging content. Because again, unless you're already a copywriter or an expert in programming or content marketing, you probably won't know what to write about or what to link to. You, as we just discussed, the hidden costs will usually exceed expectations over time. They're often very difficult or impossible to update as needed. They're often not connected to proper planning, branding, SEO, content marketing, or pay-per-click advertising. And this all adds up to often not being able to outrank competitors. We don't want to remain stuck with free do-it-yourself or templates that don't attract new customers, do not show up in Google, cannot take payments, won't work on modern phones, or don't attract new customers on social media. It's for that reason that all profitable growing businesses invest in digital marketing, expecting and planning for returns on investment in the form of accelerated growth. Real digital marketing that works lets you interact with customers, reach a global marketplace, save money over the long term, and gain more ground faster than with traditional marketing. They also let you build credibility in the eyes of consumers, establish brand identity, and automate processes. At the end of the day, there are no shortcuts in life or in business. There are no magical, immediate, free solutions to growing a business. When we stop looking for those magical shortcuts, when we commit to growth and begin planning appropriately, we allow for growth to finally occur. So to cultivate the right expectations, let's move forward toward getting unstuck and review how business owners can know what realistic marketing budgets should look like for them based on their annual income. Then we want to look at standard budget ranges for effective digital marketing that can accomplish business goals. How to determine your marketing budget. Now, according to the United States Small Business Administration, most businesses in the United States are small. They're earning less than $5 million annually and want to grow. 
they should invest 8% of their gross annual revenue into marketing to stay the course and at least 10% to grow. Now, larger businesses are businesses earning more than $5 million annually and want to grow. They should invest more than 6% of their gross annual revenue, gross annual revenue, in order to see the needle move even further. So these are recommendations from the United States Small Business Administration. Where does your bid, but where does your business fit in? Most businesses are going to be under that 5 million annual mark. So that would mean that you would want to invest 8% of your gross annual revenue into marketing just to continue. If the goal is to grow even larger, then you would want to invest at least 10% of gross annual revenue into marketing. So investing money in order to make more money. I'm sure you've heard the expression that in order to make money, you have to spend money. Many small business owners don't want to do that or they can't do that where they spend money in the wrong things, such as spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month for business listings that have very, very limited visibility or in ways that just most consumers don't use. As we could see in the previous slide, the U.S. Small Business Administration recommends businesses earning less than $5 million annually invest at least 8% of their gross annual revenue into marketing in order to stay the course. In order to grow, they recommend investing at least 10%. Most businesses in the U.S. are technically small businesses earning less than $5 million annually, so should invest 10% of their gross annual revenue back into marketing in order to expand into new markets. So now that we know how we should invest into marketing, let's find out how digital marketing budget ranges can be easily estimated in the following infographic and actually be much less than what the Small Business Administration recommends. Boom. But when it comes to digital marketing, it's important to invest in order to achieve specific results. To accomplish specific results, you have to be able to also work with experienced professionals who can walk you through an onboarding process that will help to clarify goals and set a roadmap for moving forward. And for more information about digital marketing for business growth, you can go to my website at www.dms.blue. Let's take a look at this infographic briefly. Free do-it-yourselfer templates, which are the most common approach for the, the new or struggling business. They'll have, they'll use a generic template builder that can require you to know uh, what to do with limited tools and limited help provided. You'll be posting often copyrighted images in many cases. I'm not saying someone in particular, but many business owners will post copyright images or content of any kind that anyone could object to and could result in that site being deleted or removed. They could use e-commerce that may be prohibited or cost much more to use than it would if you were to work with professionals from the outset. Personal help is often not available or it could be outsourced overseas where you're another number in a very long queue. SEO is often not as efficient as in custom design solutions, costing you leads every day. Cookie cutter templates that look like PowerPoint presentations or like many other sites could communicate unprofessionalism or just not work on all devices. The second most common level for budgets is the $500 to $800 budget. And this is most common. This is where the business owner doesn't really want to invest a lot of money. They just want 
the cheapest possible solution they can get to to try to quote unquote solve the problem and, and be done with it. It often communicates to the developer a fear of commitment. It can be less likely to outrank competitors. It can also be less likely to achieve goals or objectives. They'll often work with a freelancer who is desperate for any money they can get. The freelancer will often not be very experienced or professional. In many cases, the freelancer must move on to the next client as quickly as possible so that they can try to earn a living wage. The next third phase or level in marketing budgets is the two to five thousand dollar range. And this is what is most common for most businesses. To a developer who is experienced, it communicates a willingness to invest in order to grow business. Most are going to be satisfied with that budget and say, okay, based on the known industry standards, the work that I'm going to have to put into it as an experienced professional, okay, I can do this. They'll be more likely to outrank competitors online. They'll be more likely to achieve their specific goals and objectives as a result. They're more likely to work with an experienced professional who could commit to working with them. The person they work with will be more likely to gain interest and be excited about the project, quite frankly. And the professional they work with will be able to spend time working with them to really make sure that they knock it out of the proverbial park for them. Now, when we get to larger businesses, we get to the five to $15,000 level, which is usually for what I call enterprise businesses, where you often have 50 or more employees or multiple locations. This budget communicates a serious commitment to achieving long-term, regularly recurring growth. An example of this could be a doctor with multiple office locations, furniture warehouses with multiple locations, or a law firm. They'll be more likely to outrank local competitors who simply won't take that type of deliberate action. They'll be very likely to achieve their goals and objectives as a direct result of this. The person you work with will is be more likely to be an experienced professional who will want to ensure that your goals are met. They're going to want to do a great job for you. There'll be a greater opportunity to use digital marketing to reduce your overhead operations and cut redundant processes and procedures that you perform on a daily basis. The professional will want to exceed your expectations and really want to engage with multiple departments and make sure that you're really, really happy. Finally, the most common and most high mark, I very, very seldom have seen budgets go beyond this realistically. And this is for businesses often, as I said, with multiple locations and also multiple departments such as corporations. With this budget, you should always outrank competitors consistently unless you have something like Coca-Cola or some other global powerhouse brand trying to outrank another powerhouse global brand. They must work according to set key performance indicators. The professional will want to ensure that your website, your security, your branding, your e-commerce are all working flawlessly. It may require the, the, the professional hire additional help to fulfill larger company objectives. And the pro will want to establish an ongoing relationship with that business to make sure that everything works flawlessly. Statistically speaking, according to the U.S. Small Business Administration, 50% of small businesses fail within five years, if not more than that. Of that same number, only a third survive to their 10th year in operation. That makes competing much less achieving long-term profitability challenging to say the least. Businesses need an edge to make it, especially in a post-COVID-19 economy. Digital marketing provides that edge 
In order to fully utilize digital marketing in a complete manner, however, we have to first know how to invest realistically. So now that we're well on our way toward knowing how to invest appropriately, the next step in the process is defining objectives and setting the terms for collaboration. So if you're ready to continue moving forward, we are. Grow your business today by going to dms.blue where you can learn more about digital marketing solutions for business growth. Thanks for your time, and I hope that this information has been helpful.